What's going on guys and today we have episode number 9 now of the transfer rumour. You guys seem to be loving this series with the majority of these videos now over 100 views each I believe. Some of them even closing in on 200 so it's absolutely incredible the support and hopefully you guys can continue to enjoy this series. Today we've got some juicy transfers, we've got some, some ones that we haven't heard about before. Um, we've also got some, I believe we've got a couple of uh, confirmed ones in here but I'm not too sure about that. But we'll get straight into it now with the first player of Mario Gotza. Of course he did move to um, Bayern Munich from Borussia Dortmund a few years ago and now it looks like a return could be on the cards. £90 million is the price as well so it is pretty cheap. The rumour rate I'm going to give it is an 8. I feel like it is likely to happen. He's not been happy recently at Bayern Munich. He's not getting the game time he wants to get. Um, and I'm pretty sure Dortmund would welcome him back. £90 million as well would be a very very good price and I'd like to see this transfer happen. I'm going to give it a transfer rating of 9 I feel like it would be a very, very good transfer for Dortmund. I don't know if Bayern Munich would want to give up um, Gotts, for example, to one of their main rivals. They might want to give him to Liverpool instead, but we'll just have to see. We then go on to Carlos Sanchez, currently of Aston Villa, but maybe not for long. Marseille have showed their interest in um, the, the Colombian midfielder and yeah this would be quite a good deal for Marseille in, in my opinion I've seen I've seen him in the BPL and like match of the day and things like that and he was a very solid defensive midfielder the price hasn't kind of been um, figured out there hasn't been a price thrown about yet the rumour rate I'm going to give it is a 7 I feel like it could kind of go either way I'm edging towards him maybe moving to Marseille because he might not want to stay in the championship with Aston Villa he might want to move and also a transfer rating of 7 is I feel like it would be a pretty good transfer um, for Marseille in the foreseeable future and he would be very good in league Un. we then go on to Zoet um, the, the keeper for PSV he has been linked to Man City in the last couple of days of course Guardiola hasn't um, kind of has, he has showed interest in a lot of other goalkeepers. He hasn't really had a lot of confidence in Joe Hart, um, which is sad to see. I want to see Joe Hart stay as a number one goalkeeper. Bravo, Ter Stegen, they've all been in the cards, but Zoet is kind of the new name in here. We've also had Rully um, in the, on um, the radar as well, but uh, Zoet looks as if it could be the deal that does go through. £7 million as well, very, very cheap, and he probably would start off maybe as a secondary goalkeeper, but he might move into the first goalkeeper, um, but we never know. Rumour rating of 7, I think it is possible to happen. He does want a new goalkeeper, so it is likely but not too likely at the moment and a transfer rating of 8 I think it would be a very very good deal for Man City and have a good keeper like that alongside Joe Hart we then have Tadic who could be going to Schalke this depends on another Man City deal if Leroy Sani does join Man City I think this deal will probably go through I think they, if they want to let go of Sani they will want to already find a replacement to replace him and Tadic looks as if he could be the man from Southampton there hasn't been a price yet again thrown about as this just has came out um, just recently today or yesterday or something like that. So there hasn't been a price yet. I'm going to give it a rumour rating of 7. I think it's only going to happen. It can deter it's determined by what happens in the Leroy Sani deal. Um, so it's not really up to this transfer. It's up to other transfers to see whether this transfer does in fact happen. And also a transfer rating of 9. Because I think it would be a very, very good transfer for Schalke. He's a very, very creative player. And I really like to watch him in the BPL. We then go into to Wilfred Boney. This is yet another deal to, um, involved with Man City. And there was quite a lot of them. But this could be... A trade deal for John Stones and a certain amount of money. So we might trade, um, for example, we'll take John Stones and they can take Boney in like 20 to 30 million, something like that. It looks as if that could happen. Everton have showed their interest in him as well, so it, we could put him up as part of a deal for John Stones um, to maybe lower the actual money price of it. So it'll be interesting to see if we can pull this one off. I want to see us get John Stones, I think it'll be very good under Pep Guardiola. Um, but I'm only going to give this a rating of 6 because yet again it does kind of determine on a swap deal if that happens or not. And the transfer rating of 8, I think he'd be very, very good alongside Lukaku for Everton. We then go on to Enkidu. Um, sounds a bit like Enkidu, but it's not Enkidu. It's Enkidu of Marseille, who could be joining Spurs in the next couple of days for £13 million. This one doesn't seem like a flick one. It doesn't seem like one that's not going to happen. When you hear deals for kind of less known players, um, they normally do go through because they don't. there's not going to be papers making up that Spurs are going to make uh, sign Enkidu. Like, they may make up that Spurs are going to sign back Gareth Bale. They might make up Spurs are going to sign Suarez. Just these random deals. But when it's kind of smaller players, there is kind of more, um, more of a realistic tone to it I suppose you could say so I think this could happen I'm going to give it a room rating of 8 I think it's likely to happen in the next couple of days and a transfer rating of 8 as he does look like a very very fast and good player for the future for Tottenham Hotspur we then go on to Berahino when has Berahino not been involved in the transfer lately um, of course he's been linked with Spurs he's been linked with Newcastle or something now he's been linked with Crystal Palace 
from West Brom as current club. 20 million is the asking price or the price they'll have to pay. It isn't that expensive when you think about it. It's actually quite a good price, I believe. Um, I'm going to give a rumour rating of 6. I think Berrikinho just doesn't, doesn't seem to move from West Brom. So it'll be interesting to see this time if he does actually make the transfer. But it kind of de it's determined by whether Crystal Palace want to pay that 20 million or not. That is what um, I would like to see. I would like to see if that kind of rolls out like that or will they pay less. And um, we'll find out in the next couple of days, I presume. And also a transfer rating of 8. I think it's a very, very good transfer. We then go on to, is it Jeffrey Slup? I'm not too sure if it's Jeffrey. It's definitely Slup, but I don't know his first name. He is currently at Leicester, the champions. And West Brom have put in a bid of £9 million or are preparing a bid or something like that of £9 million. This could be quite a good deal in my opinion. I think he's a very, very solid left back. Uh, he can also play left mid, I think. And I've, is it just me or has he played striker before? It might just be me, but he seems to score quite a lot of goals when he does play. He hasn't been that consistent in the Leicester squad last season when they did win the league but when he does play he has a very very solid um, solid prospect so I'm going to give a rumour rating of 8 I think 9 million could be enough to lure him away from Leicester Leicester probably would take that much money for a player that they don't use week in week out and also a transfer rating of 9 I think it'd be a very very good deal for West Brom we then go on to the final player of today's episode guys it is Rehad Mares, one of the best players in the Barclays Premier League last season has been linked to Chelsea. He's also been linked to Arsenal, but the Arsenal one um, has kind of faded away over the last day or two. And the Chelsea one has just came through. After they signed N'Golo Kante, there's been rumours that he wants to go down the same line as N'Golo Kante and sign for Chelsea as well. £40 million is apparently um, the price they will have to pay. Is it worth it? I'm not too sure. I think £40 million might be a bit overpriced. Players like Kante that you can just tell are going to be solid uh, season in, season out. But Riyad Mahrez, will he be as good as he was last season? We'll have to find out, I presume. And will Chelsea pay that much money? Um, we'll just have to find out over the next coming weeks. I'm going to give it a room rating of 5. It is in the early stages and it could genuinely go either way. So it's right in the middle at number... F I'm going to put it at a number 5. And also a transfer rating of 9. I think this would be a good transfer for um, Chelsea. The only thing I would say is... Would this push William out the squad? That is the only thing that's probably bad about it. It might push William out the squad. Maybe Mahrez would have to play in the left. Maybe, uh, left. maybe William would have to play in the left. Or maybe one of them would play Cam. We'll just have to see what happens um, to do with that. But anyway, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, make sure to smash the like button. If we can hit 15 likes, guys, that would be absolutely insane. You guys loved my Celtic and Wolfsburg match review last night. If you haven't already checked it out, make sure to go check it out. I uploaded twice yesterday. There will be either two or three videos out today. A shout-out Sunday episode and maybe a road to go the episode we'll see how the date pans out but if you know, guys, anyway guys sorry um if you do enjoy my content make sure to just subscribe as well apart from that i'll see you guys next time